How do you define a perfect handheld? Does it mean flawless controls, 12 hour battery life or high level performance? Does it mean a metal shell or an ergonomic design? Or is it perhaps something simpler? Could it be that perfection is in the experience itself rather than a physical characteristic? My time with the Pow Kitty RGB30 has constantly brought questions like this to my mind because the RGB30 is a handheld that I cannot in good faith describe as anything less than utterly perfect, regardless of a handful of physical and perhaps digital flaws. In this in-depth review, I'm going to show you what's so great about the Pow Kitty RGB30 and why this is one handheld that you owe it to yourself to pick up and add to your collection. The Pow Kitty RGB30 is an exercise in minimalist simplicity. It's a device that stays a typical course for a retro handheld device just as much as it strays from it. But let's start out simply with the RGB30 specifications. It comes with a tried and tested RK3566 processor along with 1GB of LPDDR4 RAM. It has a 35mAh battery, dual SD card slots, one for the operating system and an optional one for your games, dual front facing speakers, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth amazingly built in on the board, comes with an open source Jealous operating system with custom firmware options already available such as ArcOS and MiniUI. And of course I have to mention the totally square 4 inch 1 to 1 aspect ratio display. Bonus features include a 3.5 inch headphone jack and HDMI output. And with a glance of the spec sheet this device is more or less exactly the same as the Pow Kitty RK2023 and the Pow Kitty X55. But the definitive differentiator here is of course the 4 inch 720 by 720 resolution 1 to 1 aspect ratio display. We're going to come back to this screen a lot later on, but for now let's take a look around the device. On the front there's dual analog controls with Nintendo Switch-esque sticks and dual front facing speakers. The top is adorned with the inline shoulder buttons, infuriatingly backwards volume keys yet again from Pow Kitty, a mini HDMI output port, and a power and a reset button. On the bottom, there's dual USB ports, one for charging and one for peripherals, dual SD slots, and a headphone jack right in the middle. The sides of the RGB30 are completely blank, as is the completely flat back. In fact, the back of this handheld is so completely flat that it actually suctions a little bit to the surface it's placed on. The RGB30 is a very square and blocky device that is much narrower and taller than you might expect from a retro handheld. And it's so blocky that you can actually stand it up perfectly straight on the top and the bottom edge and it remains completely stable. The plastic itself is adorned with these kind of decorative inlays. They don't do well anything for ergonomics or comfort, but they do add to the overall aesthetic of this device. In one way, this device feels very old school, kind of like the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus does. But in another way, the RGB30 is the first handheld I've ever owned that actually feels different. In the hands and just at a glance, it feels and looks completely like its own thing. It doesn't feel like any other retro handheld or any mainstream game console out there. It actually feels like its own standalone gaming system. It's really hard to put this into words, and you probably need to hold this device and play on it for a while to understand what I mean. But the fact of the matter is that the RGB30 is a unique handheld that has a lot of character. But we'll return to this point a little bit later on. This device is available in three different colors, black, dark blue, and the white you see here. And the white color here is a snowy, crisp white, and looks absolutely great matched with the black bezels and controls. Speaking of the controls, the RGB30 has a dual analog stick layout. The sticks are Nintendo Switch style that are slightly recessed into the case. And I am extremely happy to report that these analog sticks work perfectly, with plenty of sensitivity and no weird glitching or snapping to cardinal directions. This is the first Pow Kitty device in recent memory that doesn't have broken or bugged sticks and I'm honestly overjoyed to see it. The face buttons here are pretty typical rubber membranes that work very well, with a rather soft springiness and a lot of travel. They have a lot of space to move around in their cutouts, but that's not really an issue. The size of the buttons is really well matched with the overall size of the device, and the embossed labels look great too. Moving on to the top of the device, the inline shoulder buttons are surprisingly great. Gone are the ultra loud snappy micro switch shoulders from the RK2023 or the X55, and instead we have a muted satisfying clickiness that is tactile but not too loud. Also the L2 and R2 button are raised up substantially, which makes them easy to find and press with your fingertips. 
The weakest link on the RGB30 is the D-pad, which honestly is not very good. It's usable and decent enough for general use, but it suffers from being overall slippery in-game. This slipperiness translates into cardinal tilt, in which holding your finger anywhere except the exact centre of a direction will cause accidental perpendicular inputs. In a game like DuckTales, it means that Scrooge will repeatedly crouch when you don't want him to, especially when you change directions. In most scenarios, a D-pad like this is fine, and it makes for some smooth gameplay, especially in something like a Nintendo DS FPS game, but for accurate inputs, it's not exactly ideal. You'll often find yourself drifting in the wrong directions, especially when you're playing top-down RPGs. But despite it being a little bit slippery now and again, it certainly hasn't hampered my overall enjoyment of this device. And it is also something that can be fixed relatively easily, which I'll probably show you in an upcoming video. The RGB30 is extremely good for a very specific set of use cases, and I want to get onto those as quickly as possible. But I'll talk a little bit about performance first. For your general retro gaming needs, the RGB30 delivers without compromise, emulating all of your 2D systems including Super Nintendo and Arcade, and retro 3D systems including PS1, PSP, Dreamcast, and even some decent Saturn and N64 gaming as well. At this point, the RK3566 is a tried and tested chip that works very well at a respectable level for low to mid-range emulation. And the jealous operating system that's included with the RGB30 works extremely well with some very good optimized defaults. And so if you're looking to play Dreamcast games or below, you're probably not going to have much of a problem with performance here. For a more in-depth look at the performance of this chip, check out my RK2023 review which is on screen now. It shares the exact same spec list and is a pretty good reflection of what you can expect with this handheld too. Of particular note is N64 which I think runs really really great here. First of all, this display looks absolutely stunning, with an ultra crisp 720x720 720 resolution. It has great viewing angles thanks to being an OCA laminated IPS display. It has great brightness and it can even be tuned in the system settings so you can change things like the saturation or the contrast to meet your specific desires. But the square aspect ratio is truly a sight to behold. It's one of the characteristics that gives the RGB30 its very unique, well, character. It's such a simple divergence from the norm with retro handholds, and yet it goes miles and miles toward making the RGB feel just, well, different. The real question though is how well this 4 inch 1 to 1 aspect ratio performs in general gaming. And I think it's actually stunning how innovative and what a stroke of genius it was for Pow Kitty to go with this size of screen in particular. When playing 4x3 content, the screen delivers a big, very usable 3.5 inch play area. This is the same as on many popular retro handholds available today, such as the Anbrinic RG35XX and the MiU Mini Plus. This means that for this 4x3 retro content, which includes everything from Super Nintendo to Dreamcast, this unique style of display doesn't compromise on your general experience. Now when it comes to widescreen content like PSP and Wonderswan, your game area would be around 3 and a quarter inches diagonally. And it does suffer from the exact same problem as widescreen content does on 4x3 displays. The game area is just very short and wide. It's not exactly unplayable, but it's not exactly an ideal experience here. But this is the exact same problem that you'll get with widescreen content on a 4x3 display. So there's no extra compromise to be had with these systems here. However, now it's time to talk about what makes this screen, and the RGB30 as a whole, so absolutely fantastic. And that is when it comes to playing games that fill out more of this square display. Such as Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Sega Game Gear, Neo Geo Pocket, and Pico 8. This is where the RGB30 really comes into its own, and again starts to feel like its own thing altogether. Now I personally never had a Game Boy growing up. A lot of my friends did and I got to play on them now and again, but it's not a device that holds a lot of nostalgic value to me. And to be perfectly honest, whenever I go to play Game Boy or Game Boy Color games, other than a few specific titles like Survival Kids and Metal Gear Solid, I've never really had the urge to play through any Game Boy game start to finish on a retro handheld device. Usually I'll go straight to Sega Mega Drive, or perhaps a bigger system like PSP. It all just depends really what type of device it is I'm using. And it just so happens that the Pow Kitty RGB30 is absolutely perfect, perfect for playing Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. And this device has given me a whole new perspective on Game Boy and Game Boy Color games, 
They look absolutely fantastic on the RGB30 screen. You get these gigantic chunky pixels on an absolutely huge game area. Everything looks flawless and crisp and beautiful on the RGB30. And there's just something about this gigantic play area for these titles in particular that make it just really, really addictive to go back and try these old Game Boy games. And I've been playing all sorts of titles on this device. I played Zelda Oracle of Ages, Survival Kids, one of my favorite Game Boy games, Pokemon Pinball, and even this Yu-Gi-Oh game. And the pixel art in this game just looks fantastic on this giant screen. One of my absolute favorite retro systems though is the Neo Geo Pocket Color. And this is another instance of a system being absolutely perfect on the RGB30. Neo Geo Pocket Color games actually had a square aspect ratio in the first place. And so when you put them on the RGB30's big 4 inch square display, they fill out 100% and I cannot overstate how incredible these games look. And my favorite thing about this is not just a big game area, but it's how you can really, really appreciate the fine details in the graphics here. The Neo Geo Pocket Color was really interesting because it had different limitations on background tile sets and foreground sprites. And that basically means that you get these beautiful, detailed, colorful pixel art backgrounds with much less detailed, sometimes even dual color sprites in the foreground. Take a game like SNK vs Capcom Match of the Millennium. You can hopefully see that this looks absolutely fantastic. And if you zoom into the screen or just bring it close to your face, you can see every tiny detail of every sprite or background tile that this game has to offer. It looks so incredibly crisp and just so amazing on the screen, I really cannot put it into words. You have to see this to believe it. And it is just an absolutely flawless way to experience Neo Geo Pocket games that is substantially better than on any other handheld that's out there. And as if I need to drive this point home anymore, I want to say that this is the only device I've ever owned that has made me want to play games specifically just to go in and look at their pixel art. It really does look that good, and it brings a whole new dimension to enjoying these classic games. Another unique area that the RGB30 excels is of course Pico 8. If you don't know what Pico 8 is, it's basically a fantasy games console. It's a game engine that anybody can get and build their own games according to a specific set of rules. For example, the resolution of the games have to be 128 by 128 pixels. It's a really fun system and if you're interested in coding or anything, it's a great way to get into game development. And especially a more classic style of game development. But I digress. There are hundreds if not thousands of unique homebrew experiences available on Pico 8. And all of them are totally free. And what's even better than that is that because the RGB30 has Wi-Fi built in, you can use Pico 8 to access Splore. And Splore is basically like a gigantic game library for Pico 8 games. You can browse the list, you can search for games, and then you can play them in a single button press. That's right, without anything else on your SD card other than Pico 8, you already get thousands of games at your fingertips. And believe me when I say everything is available in here. There's Doom clones, crazy taxi like 3D driving games, puzzle games, legendary platforming games, and even one of my absolute favorites, a demake of No Man's Sky called Low Mem Sky. And there are so many unique and amazing experiences on Pico 8 and they've never been as good as they are on the RGB30. Like I said earlier, it's almost as if the RGB30 was built for Pico 8 games. And on that note, I wanna go down memory lane a little bit. Back in 2014 and 2015, I was doing a lot of game development and coding. And I remember when Pico 8 was first launched. It got traction pretty quickly and a lot of people were making some really amazing experiences on it. But one thing I remember very clearly was many, many people dreaming up these pocket-friendly devices for playing Pico 8 games. I wish I could find some of the old tweets and some of the old posts I used to read about it. But looking back, I think that if the RGB30 had launched around that time, it would have taken that community by storm. It is the absolute most perfect device for playing Pico 8 games you could possibly imagine. And I honestly think that's kind of beautiful. But I'm getting way out of hand with this particular section of the review, so I'll move on. Oh, but before I forget, you can play Pico 8 games at full screen, but the 720x720 720 resolution doesn't scale perfectly. So if you do that, you get a very, very, very slight blurriness in your games. However, you have the option to play with integer scaling instead, and then everything's perfectly crisp and beautiful. And whichever way you like it, these games are just phenomenal on this device. 
So I'm guessing you understand by now that squarish aspect ratio games are amazing on the RGB 30. But there are two more areas that the RGB 30 is fantastic. And the first is Nintendo DS. Now we don't have a touchscreen here, so it's not going to be a perfect experience. And not every single game will be playable. But if you like playing Nintendo DS games, well you can play them in vertical orientation and you still get plenty of game area. It's not the biggest screened way to play Nintendo DS games that's out there, but it still looks absolutely phenomenal and is perfectly playable on this device. And there is more than enough power here to play all of the most demanding Nintendo DS games. And the next fantastic type of game to play on the RGB 30 is vertical arcade games. I'm going to be totally honest with you here and give you a very candid opinion. I have never had an experience playing vertical arcade games on a retro handheld gaming device that hasn't been completely awful. You know when you have to rotate the device and it's all unwieldy and the controls are sideways and it's just generally a bad experience. Well the RGB 30 doesn't have that problem at all. Thanks to the square aspect ratio display, you can scale your arcade games up to the full height of the screen without having to rotate the device or hold it in any awkward way. And I mean it when I say this is the first time I've ever played vertical arcade games on a retro handheld that hasn't had some level of compromise. It's just another way that choosing this display was incredibly innovative and genuinely gives you a better experience playing vertical arcade games than you would get anywhere else. And Vectrex fans can rejoice too, because Vectrex games with their vertical orientation look great as well. Now let's get you to bed, Grandpa. So just to summarize the gaming section of this review, the RGB 30 does really, really well in all of your standard systems, and it does so without any compromise whatsoever, other than perhaps a little more black bars on the top and the bottom than you would expect on a normal handheld. And despite that lack of compromise for normal gaming systems, the RGB 30 does a better job at Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Neo Geo Pocket, Pico 8, Nintendo DS, and Vertical Arcade than any other retro handheld out there. This is the absolute best possible way to experience those portable systems and vertical arcade on any retro handheld, and I genuinely believe that. So now it's time to move on to a few of the additional features that the RGB 30 has. First of all is USB peripheral support via its second USB port, and this is really great because it lets you plug in all kinds of peripherals. You can plug in a mouse and a keyboard, or controllers, or a USB hub and then a series of controllers for multiplayer gaming and it all works absolutely fine and out of the box with no tweaking needed. Another great feature is the HDMI output. You can connect the RGB 30 to any display and it will match that display's aspect ratio. So for example, if you wanted to play some PSP on your TV or monitor, you can plug in the RGB 30 and play the game full screen. And so even though the device itself has a square screen, its HDMI output does not. And combined with the ability to plug in controllers or use wireless Bluetooth controllers, the RGB 30 is a great home console as well as a handheld. The last thing I want to mention here is the Jealous operating system that the RGB 30 ships with. It has been an incredibly stable experience for me. In the entire time I've been testing the RGB 30, I haven't had a single crash or any problems like that. Like I said earlier, I think the RK3566 is tried and tested, especially with Jealous OS at this point. This is the third or fourth device that Powkitty has put out with this operating system with this chip, and so it seems to be pretty good. And of course it comes with all the benefits that Jealous usually does, like the support for ports, for hundreds of different types of game systems, retro achievements, box art scraping, online updates, netplay, and more. And it's just really good to have such a well put together operating system out of the box. And I also think that Jealous OS on the RGB 30 makes it an incredibly user friendly beginner experience. In terms of battery life, the RGB 30 has the same issue as practically all the 3566 devices, wherein the battery indicator is all over the place. The number displayed seems to jump around and lack in any specific accuracy. In general terms though, I've been able to enjoy 2-3 hour play sessions at 50% brightness without any unexpected shutdowns, and the low battery LED does seem to be accurate, thankfully. The battery life in general seems to be really good. So. That's the RGB 30 in a nutshell. So let me sum up with my likes, my dislikes, and my overall impressions of the RGB 30. And I've got a feeling this might get a little bit too emotional. And unusually, I'm gonna start with my dislikes of the RGB 30. My first dislike is of course the D-pad. 
It's not terrible by any means, but you just kind of end up hitting incorrect directions and it's just a bit slippery overall. My second dislike is, uh, well, nothing. That's it. That's all my dislikes. And now for my likes. And really, there are just way too many of these to list because it's basically everything about it. Of course, I'll say the square screen is incredible. The front facing speakers sound absolutely great. The operating system is good and stable. It has plenty of flexibility thanks to its USB ports and SD cards and HDMI output. It has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on board. Seriously, everything about it is just really, really, really good. And so really, I feel like I should just move on to my summary. And that is, in short, that the PowerKD RGB30 is an absolutely perfect handheld. It is everything I love about the retro handheld industry. And it revives a feeling that I kind of forgot through testing so many of these devices for my channel and personally. It's easy for things to start to look and feel the same. Just look at how smartphones have evolved from 2011 onwards. And in a way, retro handhelds can be similar. There's a huge amount of choice, but not a lot of difference or innovation between devices especially at the sub $100 level. And realistically, the RGB30 isn't even that different from what's already out there. It just has one key differentiating factor in the display. But choosing this four inch square display was such an innovative and genius choice for them to go with, it actually boggles my mind. I can say that I have never enjoyed Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Neo Geo Pocket, and Pico 8 games to the level of enjoyment I get out of the RGB30. In my opinion, this is a monumentally superior experience from anything else out there, including the original hardware. You really have to see these games running on the RGB30 to believe it. They look absolutely phenomenal, and they make you appreciate the game and its pixel art so much more than you would on any other device. And then when it comes to vertical arcade games, this is the first retro handheld I've ever seen that offers that experience with no compromise. And it's pretty decent for vertical DS as well. And it's so surprising to me that such a seemingly small innovation has gone such a huge length to make the RGB30 so good. And despite being that good for those systems, it doesn't compromise for any other type of system either. I could harp on and on and on about this all day if I wanted to. But instead of doing that, let me wrap up this review with one final clean cut summary for you. The RGB30 is an absolute one of a kind essential handheld. And if you have any remote interest in retro handhelds, you owe it to yourself to pick one up. Or if you want to get the most out of Game Boy games, Neo Geo Pocket games, Pico 8, or vertical arcade games, you cannot miss this device. This is the one to get. The RGB30 is just beautiful, and I highly recommend it to absolutely everyone. If I've convinced you, or you just feel like picking one up, please do so using the links in the description box below. Whereas I bought the RGB30 with my own money, I have partnered with GoGameEek to offer you a special deal. Using the link in the description, along with the coupon code RB77, you get a whopping 15% off site-wide. That's right, everything on the entire shop is 15% off. And if you buy the RGB30, it brings it down to around $80 shipped. And that includes free global shipping and a very, very fast turnaround time. Like I said, this video is not sponsored by them, it's entirely my video. But I really like them as their customer and I've been really happy with their service. And to be frank, I think that the deal here speaks for itself. And now it's your turn. Let me know what you think of the RGB30 in the description box below. Do you have one or do you like it? Did I not cover a god tier feature that you were thinking about? Let me know in the comments. If you like this review, please leave a like on it, share the video on Twitter or any other social platform, and of course, subscribe to RetroBreeze for more content just like this. I really, really appreciate you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again next time.